When there's trouble, you know who to call. Doom Patrol. That's right, because your geek history lesson on the Doom Patrol is now in session. Doom Patrol. Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. And I'm Jason Dumalicious Inman. Welcome to your Mind University because Geek History Lesson is the podcast where we take one team from pop culture and tell you all about them in around an hour. And today we are talking about the terrible, the fantastical, <laughs> the astounding, the uncanny, the Doom Patrol. You started out with terrible. I Not the know. Happy Patrol, the know. Doom Patrol. And Ashley, why are we talking about the Doom Patrol? Well, we are talking about the Doom Patrol DC because, Comics Doom Patrol. Uh, as opposed to the Malibu Comics Doom Patrol. <laughs> <laughs> there might be a Malibu <laughs> Comics Doom Patrol, for all um, I know. Because their uh, new show, their live action television show, just debuted on the DC Universe app. app. And um, people have been requesting this episode for a long time, so it seemed like the perfect moment in time, the opportune moment. Now, you told to me there them. was a lot of, we had a lot of teacher's assistance for this episode. Okay, now here's the thing Doom Patrol is not a very well known team. How many people requested this episode? 12. What the hell? Yeah. Are there, is there like a secret Doom Patrol cult out there that I don't know about? I guess I'm going to be honest, I didn't really think anyone liked the Doom Patrol. <laughs> That's what I thought. So. I, I, don't, I don't really like them. But let me introduce them. Um, our TAs for this episode are Alexis N. Bowen. Big Hink, 1985, Trevor Garner, Carter Hutchison, Mark Baker, Drew Stern, Jeffrey Sargent, Connor Crop, Chris Dennison, Carlo Cotinola, pretty sure I nailed that, and Patrick Robinson. They all wanted to hear about the Doom Patrol. You're welcome for actually butchering all your names. Yep, you're welcome. That's it's a service a, that only we provide. It is a, a, a long-standing tradition here. I can't here. believe that many people request the Doom Patrol. I can't either, um, but thank you. We love having people recommend stuff. We yeah. love that you're that interested mm -hmm. and invested. And I just hope that this goes um, to prove that we'll get around to it eventually. Don't forget, you can do that over at our Twitter at GHL Podcast on Twitter and also at our Facebook, facebook.com slash geek history lesson. If you request an episode anywhere else on it, our it'll personal probably pages, probably slip through the cracks, we, we, just to be we honest. Probably, and we won't be able to shout you out like some of these awesome people. I can't believe 12 people. That's so awesome. Please suggest stuff. Yes. Um, and speaking of Doom Patrol, you know, the word Doom got me thinking, Jason. Yeah. Sounds an awful lot like crisis. Ooh, sounds me. like we're popping into an ad here. I'm fine with that. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not really an ad. This is, a, this is a promotion for something awesome that we have going on over at patreon.com slash jolly. Yeah, so real quick, we wanted to tell you guys, um, so over on the Patreon, our patreon.com slash Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N, the very website we use to keep this podcast free, to, <laughs> free to you, and also, uh, um, you know, we... Also do an extra podcast over there. Geek History Lesson Extra. You should mm -hmm. know about that. But we've added something special. We're doing this thing called Crisis Club. And Crisis Club is this 12-part video docu-series. Um, the episodes are around 20 to 30 minutes long. They're lengthy. They're very lengthy. And we're breaking down every scene, every moment, every character from the famous comic book storyline, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Now, if you have listened to this podcast, you have heard us talk so much about Crisis on Infinite Earths. In basically every single DC episode we've We'll probably ever talk about in this episode, talk. won't we? Oh, we most definitely will. So we're going to break it down. And the main reason why we're breaking it down over there on patreon.com slash John is because the DC TV shows are that's their big crossover is Crisis on Infinite Earths. So we're going to do that. Give you Easter eggs. Give you a nice little piece of, you know, like nerd education Insight. so that you're ready for the DC TV crossover. So if you go over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash John, you can sign up for C Crisis Club. And if you sign up uh, uh, this month is the start. If you're in Crisis Club all 12 months. 10 months. All 10 months, excuse me. For every episode, you get a special Crisis Club pin, but you can only get that if you sign up in the first month. So if you don't get on Crisis Club before the end of February... Um, you won't be able to wear your cool swag. You won't be able to wear your cool pin. Now, uh, um, you know, we're, all, we're already past the special offer, but you're going to still get a Crisis Club bookmark. There's, all, there's live streams that we're going to do through Crisis Club. It's a thing that we're really excited about because we have not talked about Crisis 
on Infinite Earth in any detail on this podcast. Um, and we thought that we were going to dive into a series that continuity heavy that... Um, it all deserved to be explored fully. Well, we wanted to put some production values mm-hmm. behind it and do some stuff. So, uh, yeah. So, Crisis Club, you can get that over at patreon.com slash Jawin, J-W-I-I-N. Thank you to everybody who supports us over there. But Crisis Club is, I think, going to be one of the coolest things of 2019. So, if you want to get on that, you got to go over the Patreon. Definitely. Shall we roll into the Tencent origin? Yes, of Doom Patrol. Uh, we're back in Tencent origin. Back to the regular podcast, everybody. Welcome back. Um, Doom Patrol is... Uh, no, you're doing Tencent origin. Yeah. What is the Tencent origin? <laughs> that was a joke, What is the, the Tencent way. origin? I know what the Tencent origin, origin. The Tencent origin of the Tencent <laughs> origin is that we decided that when we made this podcast that we needed to open the podcast up with just a basic Cliff Notes version of this team. So that way, if you ever go to a spiffy cocktail party, which could happen in the next couple of weeks, where somebody's like, hey, hey. Actually, that person wouldn't be at a cocktail party. This person would be at a cocktail party. Oh, Reginald, have you seen this Doom Patrol with Brendan Fraser? What is that, Reginald? You sound like uh, Lord Carlton, who we haven't heard from in a long time. Lord Carlton's down here. <laughs> what, what, what? Yes, um, what is this Doom Patrol? It Benedict, is. my son. So, yeah, Benedict. Really. I am the father of Benedict Cumberbatch, Lord Carlton. There's a joke from episode one. Episode zero. Episode zero, which is no longer in the iTunes, actually. That's right. Uh, uh, to keep our numbering right. Um, but Lord Carlton, uh, if you're, uh, you ever encounter Lord Carlton, you better be able to tell him what Doom Patrol is. So, Ashley, what is it? It is a DC Comics uh, super team that was originally designed to be a team of superpowered misfits who all shared the experience of having suffered a trauma and was originally dubbed, quote, the world's strongest team, unquote. <laughs> well, okay. Oh, yeah. Their first appearance was in My Greatest Adventure number 80 from June of 1963. Never heard of that title before. I'll have you note that this is several months before the X-Men. We'll talk about that. (laughs) They were originally created by Arnold Drake. Awesome name. Bob Haney and Bruno Premiani. I know Bob Haney. And the original team was the Chief, Elastigirl, and Negative Man. We'll go into some of the other no cast robot members. man at the gate. No, in the no. Oh, uh, he doesn't show up for three issues. All right, and then uh, then we'll tell you when they come on and who exactly these characters are. And then DC Universe show debuted on February fifteenth, starring Timothy Dalton, Matt Bomer, Brendan Fraser, Alan Tudyk, April Bowlby, and Diane Guerrero. A quick plug again for the Patreon: our Geek History Lesson Extra this week is going to be a review of the first two episodes. Right, we've seen the first two episodes. Jason and I have seen the first two. We will be full spoilers on episode one because it's out, and uh, no spoilers on episode two. Yeah, but we'll do a light spoiler at the beginning of that. You can find that over the Patreon. There you go. Let's move right into our meet cute. Meet cute. That is where we stole a term from romantic comedies, and Ashley and I are going to tell you where we first meeted and cuted the Doom Patrol. Mm-hmm. Ashley, yes. Um, where'd you? meet the doom patrol i'm very curious about this uh when i was first obsessed with the teen titans around the early aughts oh. i kind of went down the rabbit hole on all of the different characters including garfield logan because they AKA, show up in the doom they show up in jeff john's run uh yep aka um changeling aka beast boy who was a member of doom patrol for a while so that led me to doom patrol and the first time i actually read doom patrol was after jason and i watched the first two episodes early and in preparation for this episode so i never read doom patrol before but I mean, you weren't, you, weren't, you weren't cognizant aware of them. No, or? that's what I said. When I was first okay. obsessed with Teen Titans in the early aughts, I found them on. I found about them online and said, "I don't want to read that." Okay. And I, I never wanted to read it until I saw the TV show, and now I've read some Doom Patrol. Right. Uh, they were. They seemed too weird for me. That was a good impulse, right. Jason. Where did you first meet the Doom Patrol? Uh, back in the days of the fabled Wizard Magazine, as I've said many times, uh, Wizard Magazine, of course, was the comic book series, uh, the comic magazine that was a press magazine that told you basically everything that was happening in comic books at one time. They talked about the famous Grant Morrison run. Now, I never was able to find the Grant Morrison run or or know about it, but that was my first introduction of the characters. I later got to read them. Because they show up in Mark Wade's JLA Year One. There, there's an, Jason's favorite. There's an, there was my favorite JLA origin, and they're in two issues of the series because they do this neat thing where it's either negative. Ma- I think it's negative man is an old pilot buddy of Hal Jordan. It would have to be negative. It have to be Larry. Yeah, and he recognizes Hal Jordan through That's the mask. Cool. He's like, "How is that you?" And Hal goes, "Larry." Yeah. Um, and so they get they the Doom Patrol like tries to get one of the I think they get try to get Martian Manhunter to join that storyline. Um, it's interesting. I think the Doom Patrol are fascinating, but I I always have thought of them as supporting characters and mm-hmm. not leads. Um, so 
Yeah, I don't know. Um, that's probably my first comic booky encounter with the Doom Patrol. Interesting. Now, before we move into History 101, we do have to talk about one of our awesome episode sponsors, and that is Wix. That's right. Today's episode is sponsored by Wix. Now, if you don't know what Wix is, everybody, uh, Wix is a place, a podcast, uh, not a podcast, it is a you know website where you can use to build your website. Over 140 people use Wix for their website. I use Wix what? for my website, jawin.com, which is actually in the midst of being redesigned right now. But the coolest thing about Wix is you don't need to know anything about coding. You don't need to know anything about web building. It basically gives you hundreds of design features and apps that allow you to grow your brand online. You can do video backgrounds, menus, lists. This is the best thing about Wix. I'll tell you this. Okay. If you're scared about designing your website. I am. Cool. Wix has a template that is just point, click, and drag. Wow. So you take the elements, you drag it over here, be like, I want a blog over here. I want a store over here. I do this. I do that. That's the best thing about Wix. It's very, very simple to use. Some of the other website templates out there, some of the other website uh, providers out there are very difficult to use. And I have never found Wix is ever difficult to use because their Wix editor is, again, like I said, it's drag and drop. It's an easy website builder. They also have amazing, amazing templates. Um, so if you want to build your website with Wix, all you got to do is get started now by going to Wix.com. That's W-I-X.com slash podcast. The word podcast to get 10% off. Go to Wix.com slash podcast. I use them. You should use them. They're a great website builder. Get over there and get that Wix on. Wix.com slash podcast. And thanks to them for sponsoring the show. Yes, thank you. Thanks for them to allow us the to uh, keep this podcast free to you. To keep talking about Doom Patrol. As we I know, they are paying for us to talk about Doom Patrol. Thanks, Wix. Yeah. As we slide right into History 101. Jason, what's that? The History 101 is the main meat of the lesson where Ashley's going to tell you about the Doom Patrol that apparently she doesn't like. Uh, I think they're fine. They're You don't like Cliff? Oh, Cliff, Robot Man, Cliff. Do you know Cliff's last name? Uh, isn't it Robertson? Steel. Oh, I got it wrong. <laughs> uh, no, I actually like a lot of the characters in the Doom Patrol. Um... I don't know if I've ever liked a Doom Patrol story, though. Oh, interesting. So, but I it's going to be a very interesting recommended reading when we get to that. There's really, in my opinion, only one, one thing that could be Fair a enough. recommended Fair reading. All right. uh, but as we like to do here on the podcast, we're going to start with a bit of production history. I like that. It's my favorite part. Uh, the team that I introduced you to in the Tencent origin uh, that debuted in My Greatest Adventure ran all the way for six whole issues to My Greatest Adventure number 84 in March of 1964. Uh, 86 issue 86 i apologize and then the, it was retitled doom patrol because uh my greatest adventure was originally an anthology series doom patrol became their breakout team so they just retitled it uh doom patrol like most comics at the time yes that first doom patrol series was canceled a couple years later in 1968 at issue number 121 there have been six subsequent Doom Patrol series, uh, with the most famous ones being the Grant Morrison series that ran through the 1980s, and the most recent Doom Patrol series that was relaunched as part of Gerard Way's Young Animal imprint. Yes. When Doom Patrol was created, it was created to save the My Greatest Adventures anthology series, which editor Murray Boltonoff uh, was in charge of, and he basically told writer Arnold Drake that it was in danger of cancellation if he didn't save it. So the original pitch for the series was starring Elastigirl and Automaton, who later became named Robot Man because he doesn't actually debut until their third appearance. But in the same issue, when Cliff Steele is officially introduced and he becomes Robot Man, the writers added one more character, Negative Man. So they kind of just like made up this team as they went over the first three issues and they were like, I don't know, the Doom Patrol. Blah. Okay. Fun fact, the original team name was the Legion of Strange. In an homage to the Legion of Superheroes, and then the name was changed to Doom Patrol. Doom, oh, Doom Patrol's a better name. I was just going to ask you that. I was like, do you like it, or no, do you think the Legion Doom, callback is good? Doom Patrol's a, a good name, but Legion of Strange is, is, an, is a good name. I just think that Doom Patrol is a better title. Legion of Strange should have been their villains. Oh, yes, instead of the Brotherhood of Evil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which also, just, just a weird 
weird name. Yeah. Also evocative of the Brotherhood of Evil. Mutants. It's also it's just it's one of the classic comic book tropes that go, uh, sort of evil organizations always call them blank a blank of evil. Like it's the Brotherhood uh-huh. of Evil Mutants. Yeah, and I think most people would never brand their organization evil. Well, well, th- then we get into the argument. Does anyone think they're actually evil? No. Yeah. Uh, another fun fact: the first appearance, um, that script was half written by each of the writers. So like. One of the writers wrote the first half of the script and then the other writer wrote the back half of the script, which as somebody who co-writes with my co-host of this podcast, seems like an insane way to write a story. I wouldn't want to do that. Um, In this issue, Dr. Niles Calder is introduced as the team leader and he starts out the tradition of the Doom Patrol of recruiting misfit metahumans to work together for the greater good. Due to the original character's outcast nature, the team fights amongst itself almost from the beginning of their working career. And at the time in the 1960s, this was considered pretty revolutionary for a DC Comics team. The Justice League, the Teen Titans, and the Justice Society were always functional teams up to this point. And Marvel Comics was more known for interpersonal conflicts in their new teams that were just coming up at this time. Ironically, I feel like in contemporary comic dynamics, it switched the other way, and DC is now known for more dysfunctional teams, and Marvel's now known for teams that get along a little bit I don't know about that, but I I was going to say, like, it's probably... I was going to say more teams, I think, are more well known for being dysfunctional than mm-hmm. functional now. Because that's how people work. Yeah. Well, the Doom Patrol, you said, was 1963? Uh, June of 1963. Okay, so so the the idea of a team that's being dysfunctional, that came from Fantastic Four in 61. Mm-hmm. So so they probably were aping the Fantastic Four style. A little but bit. But they're the first of DC to yes. do this. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So I want to get into a, a little mini discussion if, yeah. if you want to indulge me. Doom Patrol and the X-Men. Yes. Came out in the same year. Doom Patrol was actually published first. It was published in June. X-Men is published in October 1963. Both are misfit teams that don't fit into society, operate out of a mansion, and are led by cryptic men in wheelchairs. Yes. Uh, They're so both I'm gonna, freaks. I'm going to hold on on asking you who you think copied who, because Arnold Drake, the creator of Doom Patrol, said this, quote, I've become more and more convinced that Stan Lee knowingly stole the X-Men from the Doom Patrol. Over the years, I've learned that an awful lot of writers and artists were working surreptitiously between Marvel and DC. Therefore, from when I first brought the idea to DC editor Murray Boltonoff's office, it would have been easy for someone to walk over and hear that and hear that I was working on a story about a bunch of reluctant superheroes who are led by a man in a wheelchair. So over the years, I began to feel that Stan had more lead time than I realized. He may well have had four, five or even six months. Now, a little later on and right before his death in 2007, he sort of revised his position and said, quote, since we were working in the same vineyards and if you do enough of that stuff sooner or later, you will kind of look like you're imitating each other, unquote, which is very sweet. Um, do you think X-Men lifted from the Doom Patrol? It's an interesting question because X-Men is obviously much more successful and now a much more valuable IP than Doom Patrol. Uh, are you, I'm it, asked. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. 100%. <laughs> Stanley ripped the Doom Patrol off. Dun, 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 and I say that with all the rest. Now, the reason why I say that is please. because it's funny. I had forgotten about this story, but as soon as you started telling me that, so I've read this great book. It's a book called Marvel Comics, The Untold Story. I'll tack that into our recommendation. Uh, it came out in 2012. It's by Sean Howe. And it sort of gets into the dirty nature of Marvel Comics. It, it's not a very positive look for Stan and Jack and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And they talk a lot about that, how early Marvel comics were like the first 10 years. Stan had spies Mm -hmm. in the DC office and he had inker. There were, there were inkers and pencilers that were working for both companies. And uh, DC had a thing where it's like, you can't work for anybody else. You have to work for us. And so they would use pseudonyms to work over there. I think Bob Layton is one of the artists that worked for both companies. So yeah. And they would pass pages Back and forth. In fact, it's a it's a huge. It's been confirmed when Jack Kirby was working on the Fourth World at mm-hmm. DC. Um, one of the artists on the Fourth World took a bunch of the pages, gave them to Stan Lee, and be like, "This is what your buddy's doing over there." Yeah. Um, so that Stan would know what he was working on. Um, I one hundred percent think Stanley 
rip the Doom Patrol off. Now, do I think the X-Men are a better usage of that concept? Yes. I agree. A hundred percent. Now, a little bit of that is like, you know, uh, sight is always better. Hindsight is always 2020. Sure. He had a, he had a great foundation. So he mm-hmm. tweaked it a little bit, made it a great idea. Yeah. Um, the X-Men are great. Um, it's the same thing like we talk about in this podcast all the time. Fight Club is a remake of The Great, Great Gatsby. Gatsby. Yeah. It's beat for beat The Great Gatsby, but they're not the same. So in that respect, um, I like the X-Men. I like the Doom Patrol. I have no problem if the X-Men mm-hmm. are a copy of Doom Patrol. But at its original thing, hell yes, Stan Lee ripped this idea off. But again... The Fantastic Four was was a ripoff of the Justice League. Uh-huh. Um, that Marvel is basically, you know, well, what, slight, do we, what do we think Thanos is if not a dark side? Comedy? Well, they're, they're, like all of early Marvel is slight tweaks and ripoffs mm-hmm. of DC Comics because the original editor was like, "I need this, I need yes. this, I yeah, need yeah. my Batman, yeah. I need my this person." Um, I just thought with with Doom Patrol and X Men, it's so much more obvious than yes. with Fantastic Four is more steps removed from the Justice League than X Men is from Doom Patrol. Agreed. Um, you know, I want to say that like they talk about. I want to say in that, and I, I could be completely wrong. I've heard that it's like, okay, that and also Stan- you didn't prep for this lesson. No, I'm teaching. I've heard stuff. that Stanley like knew, like knew, and was like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat them to the punch." believer now again that in no way disrespects stanley's career no absolutely not and it no, no, no. no way in disrespects that the x-men we um, did the x-men won we did a lesson the x-men won celebrating <laughs> stands the x-men characters. have movies yeah. doom patrol yeah. just now got a tv show um i mean what do you think about it i think so i just as uh, the doom patrol is just a lot less in popular culture um like i said the ip is just less successful but when you line it up like that yeah sometimes it's crazy to have that brought to your attention for the first time well, and yeah, and i knew yeah. that you knew a little bit about that so i just wanted to kind of start this lesson well, it's the same, it's by the same, bringing that it's up the same thing um some of the research that i've been doing for my book uh-huh. um nick fury is a ripoff of sergeant rock yeah yeah, yeah. straight up is, Which, a, is, again, a, is a ripoff and of now rock. more people know about nick fury than yep. sergeant rock mm-hmm. so it's kind of mm-hmm. weird when you sort of put the receipts side by side to be like what yeah, yeah, yeah exactly all right so we can move on from that i yeah. just thought it was a fun way to start the villains created for the doom patrol's original series were intentionally created to be as wacky as the heroes so here's a list of some of their original foes and kind of what they were all about general immortus is a man obsessed with immortality and willing to do anything to get it that's a that's a classic trope then we have animal vegetable mineral man Who's a shapeshifter, kind of like that kid's game, you know, is it animal, vegetable, 20 questions. The Brotherhood of Evil, led by Monsieur Mala and the Brain, who are a hyper-intelligent gorilla, popular trope over at DC Comics, and a literal brain that rolls around inside a machine. Uh, the Brotherhood also has a member named Madame Rouge, which means Mrs. Red. Um, despite being a woman, she's part of the Brotherhood, and she basically has the same powers as Ralph Dibney and is best known for impersonating other people. So if you want to know where Mystique came from, Madame Rouge. Jason, I want to ask you, do you know who the first super team the Doom Patrol ever crossed over with was? I'm going to say the All-Star Squadron. squadron. Uh, that's a good guess. It is incorrect. It uh, is... What is it? The Challengers of the Unknown. Ooh, I like the Challengers of the Unknown. Can you tell us really quick uh, who they are? The Challengers of the Unknown are four adventurers who find out that they are living on borrowed time and they put on purple jumpsuits and they race across the cosmos to do all that they can do. The ripoffs of the Fantastic Four. There you go. Uh, so everyone was copying everyone. It happened. By the way, um, so I was doing a little quick... Uh, uh, Googling? Internet Googling. So you mentioned General Amortis. Yes. Who is a um, Doom Patrol villain. Yes, they're original. Amortis is a, another identity of the Avengers villain Kang. Oh, wild. That's what I was... And so I wanted to check the dates. Um, Amortis Kang appears in November of 1964. General Amortis first appears June 1963. Ooh, we got Rissi. Same exact spelling as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting. Um, Very interesting. A lot of copying going on in the 60s there. So the Doom Patrol working with the Challengers of Unknown. The Challengers. You have to say it like that. The Challengers of the Unknown. Well, I, I bow to you to do that. Uh, together fought Multi-Man and Multi-Woman, who are characters no one has ever heard of and do exactly what they sound like. I like the name Multi-Man, though. Uh, multi-man is definitely better. The alliteration is, is very It should fun. be a uh, wonky woman. Yes. No. <laughs> absolutely not. Wild woman. Come on. Ooh, a wild woman. All right, yeah. Uh, then they got rid of the challengers because they were too weird. The challengers of the unknown. 
And they next team up with Barry Allen, The Flash, in The Brave and the Bold, number 65. It's not long after this that uh, series sales dropped off and the original Doom Patrol series gets canceled at issue 121, which I just want to say... 121 is still a good run. 121 is an amazing yep. run, and it's also the longest run the Doom Patrol has ever had. Oh, you're you're probably right. Had. Yeah. So, uh, I'm Excellent sh- point. I'm shading it a, a little bit, but it's yeah. not an... Un- we should be so lucky that Jupiter Jet gets to 121. Well, I mean, we're going to be lucky to get to 10. That's right. <laughs> uh, the final issue tells the story of the Doom Patrol sacrificing their lives to defeat Madame Rouge and General Zal in order to save a small town in Maine. This was the first time in comic book history at any publisher that a series ended with the death of most of the team members. Cool. There was also a letter writing campaign started by the artist and the editor in a bid to keep DC from canceling the series or from bringing it back. Spoiler alert, it didn't work. The fans hey, didn't you know, care. But to be honest with you, that is a smart move by that artist and editor mm-hmm. to keep their job smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gene Roddenberry did the same thing and it saved Star Trek in season two. I just think it's funny because it didn't work. Usually you hear yeah. about letter writing campaigns yes. in comics because they did work or because Jason Todd got killed over the phone. It took nine years for Doom Patrol to get its original reboot, which was written by Paul Kupperberg and Joe Station was drawing and it was edited by Paul Levitt's legendary DC Comics uh, We could later go on to become the president of DC Comics. Yes. Now, Jason, I know that you're a big fan of Paul Kupperberg's work because he wrote the Superman family title that we've brought up repeatedly on this yep. podcast. I just wanted to shout that out. Mm-hmm. The new Doom Patrol team debuted in Showcase number 94 in August of 1977. I like Showcase. That's a, uh, that's a good comic book. That's a that's a good staple DC comic book series that I wish would come back. Uh, I feel the same way about Sensation. Mm-hmm. Uh, Copperberg stated that he wanted to create a new team in order to respect the deaths of the team members from the original run, and because here, get ready for some more copying. Len Wein and David Cockrum had recently rebooted all new, all different X Men to so much fanfare at the time. Uh, Len Wein, also someone we like to send up and celebrate a lot on this podcast. Well, Len Wein, uh, besides being like one of the greatest comic book creators of all time, yeah, uh, the creator of Wolverine, the creator of Swamp Thing, of Nightcrawler. course he is, and Nightcrawler. Um, Len Wein also comes into um, an interesting thing to c- continue this cross copying of Marvel and DC because I cannot remember who he was roommates with that writer at DC. Oh, uh huh. Who was? All, who I was, can't remember who that was. I'm going to try to look this up because there, there's this famous story where the Justice League and the Avengers Appear cross in each other's over books, yeah. in each other's regular books, and it's because Len Wein was writing one and his roommate was writing the other, and because they lived in the same Brooklyn apartment. Yes. Uh, I'm going to try to figure it out. That's totally fine. Uh, Paul Copperberg has since admitted that creating a new Doom Patrol team was a mistake and it lost the original point of the team. I'll leave it to the listeners to do their own reading and decide whether or not they agree with that. But the new Doom Patrol lineup, here's what it looks like. The only surviving member of the team was Robot Man, but he gets a new body who's that's built by Dr. Will Magnus. Jason, do you know who Dr. Will Magnus is? Dr. Will Magnus is the inventor of the Metal Men. That's right. He builds really good uh, robot bodies. Their new leader is Celsius, who is the chief's wife, <laughs> who had never been seen, heard of, or mentioned before this series. Yeah, we know he's not married. Uh, They're also joined by Valentina Vostok, a.k.a. Negative Woman. She is a Russian cosmonaut possessed by the negative spirit since Larry Trainer's death. Her powers are a little bit different because she can transform her entire body between the two forms instead of having to physically separate the negative spirit the way Larry Trainer had to. And rounding out their lineup is Joshua Clay, a.k.a. Tempest, but not Tempest from Teen Titans. He's a Vietnam deserter who can fire energy bolts from his hand. I actually really like Joshua Clay, and he does stick around through the Grant Morrison era of Doom Patrol series. I don't think he has the best introduction, though. I will say that. Yes. The new Doom Patrol received a three-issue tryout. Sales were poor, and it never went to a full series. Some comic book historians can test that a new Doom Patrol would have never worked during this time because this took place during what was known as the DC implosion. Yes, which we've talked about on this episode, uh, on this podcast before. I was going to say, um, the DC implosion is a popular label for a sudden cancellation of more than like 25 ongoing and planned series. DC almost DC went comics. under is what happened. Yeah. Yes. In 1978. Now I need to uh, pause. I'm going to take us real quick back to 1973. Please. It was Steve Englehart, yes. Jerry Conway, and Len Wein all lived together. who all lived together and did that secret Avengers Justly crossover. Uh, I, again, you can find it out. Um, it happens in uh, 
Englehart was writing Amazing Adventures number 16. Um, then Just League of America, written by Len Wein, and then Conway's Mighty Thor. There you go. So those are the titles that they stealth crossed over. So there's uh, some more on an unintentional recommended reading yep. for you guys. So the new Doom Patrol never got a full title, but it did moonlight in a bunch of other titles, like the Superman Family, because it was written by the same dude, DC Comics Presents, and Supergirl. They actually cross over with a lot of Superman and Superman Family characters at the, in the late 70s. Robot Man also crops up in the new Teen Titans throughout the 1980s, and he's a pretty good time over there. The Marvel Wolfman series? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh. Marvel Wolfman, George Press. Uh, his stories all directly tie into his relationship with Garfield Logan, who was going by Changeling instead of Beast Boy at yep. the time, because Changeling was a member of the Doom Patrol. Uh -huh. uh, the Teen Titans even did battle against Madame Rouge and General Zal, who killed all of the original Doom Patrol members, and were able to destroy them in battle. Thanks, Teen Titans. Then... Crisis on Infinite Earths happens. Mm -hmm. Now, Jason, before people head on over and join us in Crisis Club, really quickly, what's Crisis on Infinite Earths? Well, I mean, you just go over to patreon.com slash John and you know every, everything about Crisis on Infinite Earths is there you it's go. a story. So go over there, listen to that, <laughs> then come back and the finish The DC this Universe lesson. gets rebooted because the Anti-Monitor eats the universe. Yum, yum, universes. And he, and, he, and he poops out a brand new DC Universe. Yeah, so for some reason, after all that and after a failed series pitch, Paul Copperberg got a chance to pitch a new Doom Patrol series in 1987. And um, the first issue was picked up and it was drawn by uh, legendary Superman artist John Byrne. And it Weird. appeared in Secret Origins Annual Number One. Oh, John Byrne, we're not done with John Byrne. He does more Doom Patrol. Yes, he do. He writes Doom Patrol. I didn't know that. Crazy. Yeah, this was a wild lesson. Wow. Um, right. In October of uh, 1987, um, the new Doom Patrol series is launched uh, after the annual, and it's drawn this time by Steve Lytle. Um, who didn't want the job because he didn't like Paul Copperberg's previous Doom Patrol series and he didn't want to take it. So he quit after issue five and was replaced by Eric Larson, famously an Image Comics founder. One of the Image Comics founders, the writer and creator of the Savage, Savage Dragon. Dragon. Although fun fact, uh, Paul Copperberg didn't like Eric Larson and stated, quote, I like Eric's work, but I don't think he's exactly right for the Doom Patrol. To tell the truth, I don't think either Eric or myself were happy with the arrangement, but we did our best to make it work, unquote. So they had a messy run. Yeah. Their new team members that they introduced were a character named Lodestone, who's a girl with super strong magnet powers. Lodestone. Karma, who has the ability to psychically knock people over when they're trying to attack him. I know Karma. And Scott Fisher, who can shoot heat and fire from his hands, so he wears stupid gloves the whole time. These these um don't sound like freaks, like the original Doom Patrol characters. These are bad characters. These um, are just people with superpowers. Yeah. At issue 19, they fired everyone off the book and gave it to Grant Morrison. I know. <laughs> and Doom Patrol got good for the first time in its entire history. This happens uh, right after the DC Comics Invasion big crossover yep. event, um, which allowed Grant Morrison to get rid of a lot of characters he didn't like and to bring his own lineup of characters in onto the book as well. Because in Invasion is basically yes. this giant crossover, uh, the first crossover post Christ on Infinite Earth. The Dominators are attacking Earth. They're attacking Earth because of the metagene. So a lot of new people that didn't have powers get powers. And some people that had powers lose their powers. But it's all about like sort of creating new metas. Yes. Um, and DCTV famously um, ap did it. aped it yep. in one of their big crossover events. Uh, Grant Morrison's lineup of the team is Robot Man. Yep. Joshua Clay. But he's no longer involved in the field work. He's only there in a medical capacity, which I love. I think this is peak Joshua Clay. Dr. Niles Calder returns to the team. Rebus. Rebus is Larry Trainer merged with the body of an African American female doctor named Eleanor Poole and the negative spirit to form a quote hermaphroditic transracial gestalt character unquote which is maybe the most Grant Morrison thing I've ever heard yep, of. Yep it is. I googled the name Rebus because Grant Morrison don't do anything by accident. Oh yeah what happens? What did um, you find? Rebus is a reference to a literary character from uh, 1613. The Sounds Re like Graham Morrison. The Rebus image appeared in the work Azoth by philosopher Basil Valentine. The Rebus from the Latin race bina, meaning dual or double matter, is the end product of an alchemical magnum opus or great work. Alchemy being changing one thing into another. Um, and it usually involves hermaphroditic 
portrayals or something that is both male and female at the same time and is sometimes broken down into a red king and a white queen okay which if you have read this series makes so much sense and if you haven't i'm really sorry to throw all those words at you Another team member is Crazy Jane, created by Grant Morrison, who is a young woman with multiple personalities, all of whom have unique metahuman abilities. And she's the main they, character on the show. Yes, and they live inside her body on a magical underground railway station. Dorothy Spinner, who is a highly intelligent Cro-Magnum child with imaginary friends who are also very powerful. And looks like Dorothy Gale from Wizard of Oz. Mm-hmm. And Danny the Street, who's a sentient street. Yes, which is interesting because that is sort of a... That sort of character will get a copy or a reboot later because Jack Hawksmore, yes. created by Warren Ellis in The Authority and Stormwatch, is sort of this character that can talk to cities and streets. Yes. The main, Which is a weird power. It's very weird. But he's also, at the same time, kind of just a road with houses on it. Mm -hmm. The main villains of the series are the Brotherhood of Dada, inspired by both the Brotherhood of Evil and the Dadaism artistic philosophical movement led by a character named Mr. Nobody, who is also the main villain on the show in the first season. Reading the series is a lot like crawling around in Grant Morrison's head at the time he was writing this. You get a sense of the greatest hits of what he was into during the 80s, um, which is a lot of surrealist art, Dada theory, and romantic poetry. He has listed his inspirations for the series as William S. Burroughs, Brian Geisen, Jorge Luis Borges, and Heinrich Hoffman, if you're interested and want to do more Googling. Um, I, I literally can't take you through beat for beat what happens because it's so wild and it's so out there. Because it's Grant Morrison. So diving into this, we're going to go through some of the important themes and hit kind of the best hits of this series. But it is it is so wild. I read half of it and my brain broke. Yeah. Graham Morrison. That's right. He's very here. He's a crazy Scottish guy. Uh, many of his storylines also homage classic comic book stories, including the Brujeria storyline from Swamp Thing, um, which is one of my favorite Swamp Thing stories and is also my favorite Doom Patrol story from this era because it's got witchcraft in it, and that's right up my alley. In issue 42, Grant Morrison introduced Flex Mentallo, who is a character I know yes! Jason loves. Um, so really quickly, can you tell us a little bit about Flex Mentallo? Flex Mentallo is sort of a remake of the Charles Atlas. Uh, now, Charles Atlas, if you don't know, back in the day in comic books, there used to be this ad yep. where this little skinny dude was on the beach with his lady and this big muscly guy kicked sand in his face and the girl went with the big muscly guy. Well, the guy then bought a book from Charles Atlas program. He worked out for like a year and then he came back and then he kicked sand and the big bully and got the girl back a year later. Now, I think the guy should have just moved on. But anyways, uh, so the idea is that, that Flex Mental is sort of this like... Um, omniscient perfect ideal of Charles Atlas yeah like he's sort of this sort of pulpy comic book character Superman that can see the audience knows he's in a comic book and can do everything um, Flex Mentale by Grant Morrison which comes out I think maybe five or six years after this mm -hmm. is amazing mm -hmm. and if you have never read it you definitely should Here's uh, something fun about Flex Mentale as well I didn't know he debuted here I thought he debuted he in his own did. series crazy um Charles Atlas or the people who owned whatever copyright was left on yeah. it sued DC Comics. Makes sense. Uh, for copyright infringement, but they won under, uh, or DC won the suit. They they didn't have to pay out under fair use and parody. And Pro also yeah. because the statute of limitations on the character design had passed by that point. They yeah. hadn't renewed their copyright. Mm. Um, but I thought that was interesting. Uh, now, if they called him Charles Mentallo, they probably would have lost. They probably would have lost, but they called him Flex. Um, mm -hmm. Grant Morrison homage the Galactus Trilogy directly in issue 53. So if you like the Galactus Trilogy, check out Doom Patrol 53. And it's so funny, especially since Grant Morrison uh, goes on to write the Fantastic Four. Yeah, there's even a one-shot <laughs> issue that parodied X-Force, Punisher, and Beard Hunter, who were three other series that were going on at the time. Uh, the series later revealed that the chief... The chief I don't know if I said this earlier, so I'm going to backtrack, is Niles Calder's nickname, their uh, wheelchair-bound leader. I've never understood that nickname. Me either. All right. Because uh, I don't think they explain it. I'll figure it out. <laughs> I think they call him the chief because he's in charge of them. But anyway, it re it's revealed in the latter half of the series that the chief caused all of the accidents that transformed Cliff... Larry and Rita into metahumans because of his hatred for them as regular human beings. He viewed them as spoiled, shallow, and narcissistic, so he ruined their lives. 
He claims that by turning them into freaks, improve them as human beings. He also claimed that he was never married to Celsius. Remember her from the unpopular version of the Doom Patrol like two reboots ago? And that he had lied to them about it the entire time. Now, this is um, the first time that Dr. Niles Calder is sort of portrayed as a bad guy. Now, it's interesting. The Doom Patrol has set up the X-Men. The, the X-Men are a copy of the Doom Patrol. To me... This is Grant Morrison copying the X-Men back onto Doom Patrol because at this point Mm -hmm. in X-Men history, we had already experienced in the 80s was the first time we experienced evil Professor Xavier. Yes. yeah. So I think we're also post Dark Phoenix saga as well, where we learn what he did to mm -hmm. Jean and her psyche. So I think this is Grant Morrison doing a reverse copy. I love it. Lean into it. So Robot Man was so mad to learn that he freaks out, kills Joshua Clay, and paralyzes himself as a result. Dr. Calder had been planning to release a bunch of nanobots on the world to turn everybody into freaks and improve all of humanity. But instead, he trades his nanobots to a villain called Candlemaker in order for Candlemaker to resurrect Joshua and bring him back to life. But Candlemaker literally turned around and decapitated Calder, so things didn't really work out so well for him. Then Rebus made it with a duplicate version of itself. Jane traveled through a portal to a world without superheroes, then was rescued by a robot man to come live with him in a house on the sentient street, Danny the Street. Then Morrison ends his run at issue 63. And you think it's not going to get any weirder than that, but you're so wrong. Because he's replaced by Rachel Pollack, who is uh, maybe most well known for her work in tarot and spiritualism. Mm -hmm. She brought the Doom Patrol under the Vertigo imprint for the first time. In fact, her debut issue was the first issue Vertigo Comics ever published ever, 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 ever. Doom Patrol. Oh, oh, no. Ever, ever, anything. Ever, ever, anything. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Her team was made up of Niles Calder, Robot Man, and Dorothy Spinner and her imaginary friends. Very, uh, very slimmed down. Pollock's series deals with spiritualism and gender uh, thematically rather than artistic inspiration that Grant Morrison took for his team. Judaism and Kabbalah are a big part of the story. And the angel Akatriel from Judeo-Christian religion even becomes a prominent character towards the end of the story. Dorothy even has to hunt down the tree of life to repair Robot Man's brain. And it gets real weird for a while. Then it's canceled at issue 87 in February of 1995. Jason. 95 is a good run, though. Uh, 87 in 1995. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, do you think Doom Patrol stories need strong influences from art and spiritualism, or do you think they get too crazy? No, they think they do. Yes. Why? Because otherwise, how are they different from the X-Men? That's fair. I mean, they're a group of freaks. Um, X-Men took that concept and, and made it better. Mm. That's never what the Doom Troll has been about. The Doom Troll has always been about freaky weirdos. So, yes, I think the subject matter and the themes and the story should be about freaky weirdos. I, 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 I do think that Doom Patrol, you should feel whatever philosophy book or whatever the author you should be able to see the influences yeah i think so or you should learn you should use doom patrol to expose people to you know meta modernism or whatever you want to call it mm-hmm. so doom patrol goes to sleep for six years to be relaunched in december of 2001 by john arcudi and tan ang Huat. sorry about that as part of the uh, main dc universe again but it only ran for 22 issues and it spends a lot of time addressing what happened to the team members that we've seen in series before this yes we learned that uh, dorothy spinner suffered a mental breakdown and killed most of her teammates oh, no. while she was in a coma she created a new robot man who was not cliff Steele. uh characters named fast forward kid slick fever and freak joined the team and a good amount of time is spent searching for the real cliff Steele, who's then returned to his robot body This Doom Patrol also built out a secondary team with team members who are much more popular, like Elongated Man, Metamorpho, Dr. Light, and Beast Boy, a.k.a. characters the readers already knew. Then in 2004, John Byrne comes back. In 2004? Yep. Okay. He took over the Doom Patrol as writer and artist. Weird. And he rebooted not only the team, but their entire history and continuity. Here are the changes that he made. Okay, good luck, John Byrne. Beast Boy had never been a part of the team. Don't like that. Characters Nudge, Grunt, and Vortex were introduced as new members over the course of the series. 
Uh, Cliff steals Robot Man and Rita Farr's Elastigirl were team members who were then sent back through time to live in their younger bodies. Cliff is returned to a younger body. He's in his 20s. Rita's returned to her 12-year-old body. While as a 20-year-old and a 12-year-old, Cliff Steele admits that he has feelings for Rita Farr. He's in love with her. He kisses her. The story receives so much uh, criticism that it's canceled. Good. Then Infinite Crisis (laughs) happened. Jason, what's Infinite Crisis? Infinite Crisis, where Superboy Prime from the old Crisis on Infinite Earths uh, story from Earth Prime, our Earth, uh, punches the walls of reality so much that the DC Universe almost gets an entirely new reboot and the multiverse is reborn. Now, Doom Patrol specifically gets affected by one of these punches. Yeah, Doom Patrol's previous history and incarnations were all restored to continuity. Yes. With the addition of Mal and Karen Duncan being retroactively added to the roster, Mal Duncan is usually Guardian, although at this time he was a character known as Vox. Karen Duncan is Bumblebee. They're married. They're cute. I love them. And there's also a change that at this point, Niles Calder had been dead. Yes. And in the Teen Titans Jeff Johns run, they reveal that Niles is just... He's not dead. He's just back alive. Yeah. And they don't really explain why. Well, and then also at this point, they reveal that the team... Is okay that Niles made them all freaks? Yeah, they're not like mad about it anymore because we need to just move on from that. Yes. They need to be a goddamn yeah, team Yeah, yeah, but they bring that back from the Grand yeah. Morrison run. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's weird. Then Keith Giffen, J.M. Dematius, and Matt Clark take over the title in 2009 with an all-new lineup again. Elasta Girl, who's an adult now, changes her name to Elasta Woman. Negative Man, Robot Man, The Chief, Mento, Bumblebee, and Vox. And they basically get rid of all the John Byrne original characters because nobody liked them. Good. The series only runs for 22 issues and is canceled in 2011 because then the new 52 happens. Mm -hmm. Jason, what's the new 52? Barry Allen missed his mom so much that he ran back in time and screwed up the entire timeline and even screwed up the anti-monitors, pooped out nice little universe, and it all resets. We're going back to zero. The DC universe is brand new again. The Doom Patrol is introduced into continuity in Justice League number 30, made up of Robot Man, Elastigirl, Negative Man, MIA, Niles Calder, and Element Woman. Fun fact, the team tries to kidnap Jessica Cruz and force her to join them, because that sounds like a good idea. The New 52 also reintroduces the idea into continuity or into the new continuity that Calder causes all the accidents. I gave the team their powers. I'm fine with that. Then Rebirth happened. Mm -hmm. Jason, what's DC Rebirth? I mean, Rebirth is nothing major, just... You know, uh, rebranding. Then Young Animal happened. What's Young Animal? Well, Don't yeah. worry about it. Gerard Way yep. got an imprint. Uh, and in that, Gerard Way was writing the Young Animal title. Um, he does the his Doom ben- Patrol title. Sorry, that's what I meant. Yep. Yes. He does his best Grant Morrison impression, but it's unfocused. It took two years to publish 12 issues. The series was canceled. It wasn't very good. Robot Man talks like a teenager. Uh, Nick Darrington art was really good, though. Nick Darrington is amazing yep. his art is amazing he's really good he draws the heck out of a robot man uh, his redesign of robot man is really cool yes um which is based very heavily on the grant morrison which mm-hmm. is the original design of robot man in the jacket um and nick darrington's design is actually i think what's most heavily influenced the costume on the show in the show yeah. that brendan Fraser is definitely not inside of um and that is your history lesson on uh on ye oldie doom patrol but before we move on jason is going to tell you about our final episode sponsor the amazing purple yes today's episode is also sponsored by purple ashley yes gonna ask a question for you okay how'd you sleep last night terrible did you uh spend the night tossing and turning Mm -hmm. yeah you did so you've been waking up with like a stiff neck it's a back pain and not enough sleep yes well that's because you don't have a purple mattress ashley you're right you need a purple mattress you want to tell you you want to know why i do let me give you some history about purple the founders of purple are two brothers mm. the purple brothers i don't know if they're the purple <laughs> brothers but i like to think that they're the purple, the purple brothers <laughs> the purple men oh i love that they're doom patrol villains they have been developing cushioning secret technology for over 30 years on things like medical beds and wheelchairs and then in 2016 they finally decided to create their legion of mattress and use their patented comfort technology to create purple which is supposed to be the world's most scientific mattress Ooh. now if dr niles calder knew about these purple brothers and their secret mattresses i think he would invite them to be part of his doom patrol simply for the comfort nice so everyone out there you're going to love a purple mattress they are backed by a 10-year warranty they give you free shipping and returns and they come 
into your home, they set it up, and then they remove your old mattress, because that's the worst thing about buying a new mattress is getting rid of that old mattress. So, you're going to love Purple, and right now, our listeners will get a free Purple pillow with the purchase of a mattress. That's in addition to the great free gifts they're offering site-wide. Just text Geek History, the words Geek History, to 84888. The only way to get this free pillow is to text Geek History to 84888. That's G E E K H I S T O R Y to 84888. Uh, and then thanks to Purple for sponsoring the podcast and making sure that it's free to you. And, uh, you know, let us talk about the Doom Patrol. Yeah. It's a great villain name, the Purple Brothers. And, uh, you know, you can pick up our recommended reading to check out as you lay your head down on your new pillow. And you can get that at geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading. You go over there, you click on the widget, you buy whatever Doom Patrol stories you're most interested in, and your support helps us do more crazy lessons like what we've done for you here today. So I'm going to add to the site uh, the Marvel book that Jason mentioned earlier in the lesson, but I also really want to encourage people... I made this joke where I said Grant Morrison gave Doom Patrol their only good storyline. I 100% agree. I've read I it. stand by it. I've read it. Um, uh, like I said, I read, I read about that half of it. That is correct. It is wild. It will open up your mind. It will give you lots of things to Google. It's difficult, but I do think it's worth it. You know, but let me tell you this. Wouldn't you rather read a comic book like that than a comic book that is just a straight, simple, boring fight again? Ten thousand yeah. percent and booster golden blue beetle show up in it there you go so my recommended reading is doom patrol by grant morrison book one book two and book three yeah that's collects the his, full saga collects his entire series yeah uh i really don't think doom patrol gets better than that and uh just a, a little little taste of our ghl extra where we're gonna talk about the show um very heavily like there are scenes that are straight up just lifted There's dialogue from this grant straight morrison. up lifted from yeah, the grant morrison yeah, yeah. yeah so if you're digging the show if you're interested in the show you you have to read this yeah all right discussion time discussion time it's where we're going to discuss things jason i have but one question for you okay what's the reason a doom patrol series don't last you mean the comic book series yeah because we don't know about the tv show yet i mean the grant morrison run the one that we i just talked about it's the only one that's lasted uh beyond the original series for more than 20 episodes 20 issues you could apply that to almost any comic book character i think in any comic book series i think the or perhaps more correctly is why hasn't it broken big too weird well, I would argue that maybe the first series did break big because it lasted for 120 issues. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's no small accomplishment. But I mean, when you think about Doom Patrol historically, do you think about them in the same breath? And I don't mean this disrespectfully, I just mean it as a point of fact. Yeah. Do you think of it in the same breath as Teen Titans, uh, no. Justice League, no. even Justice Society? No. You know? Um, I honestly think because it's so weird. Mm-hmm. But that's in, that's part and parcel. It's also part of the charm. Yes, it's part of the charm. That's why I think it, that's part of the reason why I think it hasn't lasted because it's so, it's such a weird concept and people overall has been proven time and time again, people like to read, read milk and potato comic books. Mm-hmm. They like to read comic books that are very simple and very straightforward and are superhero punching people in the face. They don't want to think about a robot that's trying to commit suicide. And mm-hmm. They don't want to think about a multiple personality schizophrenic and they don't want to think about a uh, ghost negative man who might have uh, sexuality issues. They don't want to think about that. But, you know, Doom Patrol is just like every other comic book character, every other story, every other movie with the right writer and the right team. It'll work. Sure. All right. We just haven't seen it yet. I think uh, I think that puts a very nice button on it. I don't know what else to say. That's about it. Yeah. I do think, I will say, for how weird and sometimes how difficult Doom Patrol can be, especially when you're checking out some of the older issues, there are very progressive ideas there. Yep. Like the idea of Rebus as being like this hermaphroditic, transracial, like just this mixing of every that's different like aspect of humanity. That's a big idea. It's a big idea for like a modern audience. Yeah, 30 it years was introduced ago. in 30 the years ago. 80s. Yeah. Um, and there are weird things and there are missteps, but I think I think that's where the value in, in the stories come from is the fact that they can explore. Like you could not explore that in Justice League. Um, and sometimes that doesn't always translate. And that's why... Um, I contend, I, I stated that, like, I don't know if I've ever enjoyed a Doom Patrol story because they don't read like a classic comic book story. Yeah. So they're challenging, but that doesn't mean they're bad. Shall we slide right into the honor roll? Yes, the honor roll, where if you go over to Apple Podcasts slash iTunes and you leave us a five-star review, you can write whatever you want. 
because you'll just be helping us in the iTunes algorithm, helping new listeners find this podcast. But then we're going to read your review on the air. Yes. Ashley, who's who's joining the honor roll, the GHL honor roll? We this have week? Uh, two inductees into the honor roll, and that is JT Money seventy two, who says, "Love GHL. I started listening at the TMNT episode. I loved it, and I would love to hear more. But I listened to all your other shows, and they're all." Awesome. Thank you, JT Money 72. Wow, that's cool. It was high praise from JT. Yes. And joining JT Money 72 is Bree City Al, who says, awesome podcast. Cool podcast format, and the episodes they do are very informative. They do a good mix of Marvel, DC, and cool shows like Game of Thrones. Oh, the Stark and Lannister episodes are my fave. Thank you. Um, and they also gave us five stars. So thank you, Bree City Al and JT Money 72. Uh, welcome to the Teacher's Lounge. JT and Al, you can open up the door. You can come into the Teacher's Lounge with us. And you can have all the apples in the bowl on the table you want. Take as many apples as you want. It's refilled every day by Mrs. Greasley. What does Mrs. Greasley teach again? Uh, automotive engine repair. Oh, good for her. Yeah, she's a she's a tough lady. She's a real uh, she's a real Betty Cooper. And she's very much about like you know eating an apple a day and keeping those weird doctors away, especially yeah. the doctors from the Doctor Niles Calder. The Doctor Niles Calder and the Legion that's of Strange. strange. Uh, so yeah, that's it for the podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, don't forget about a hashtag. Stick around. It's a part we're gonna have a secret conversation after all these plugs. So you stick around through the plugs. You know, you're gonna hear more conversation. Um, subscribe to us on iTunes. I iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spotify, everywhere you can get podcasts, guys. Don't forget over to patreon.com slash John if you want to support the podcast directly. You like our show. You like our content. Give us support directly. It's the best way to support the show. Come join Crisis Club. Um, come join Crisis Club. Listen to the Geek History Lesson extra episode where we're going to review the first two episodes of Doom Patrol. There will be some non-spoilers in that. Uh, you can follow us on GHL Podcast on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at Jawin. That's J-A-W-I-I-N. Follow Ashley on Twitter at Ashley V. Robinson. And we're going to get a quick last shout out to all our TAs because they suggested this episode over at GHL Podcast on Twitter and Facebook.com slash Geek History Lesson. Ashley, who's those amazing TAs who suggested Doom Patrol and gave everybody this awesome episode? Shout out to all of our TAs, including Excess. Alexis N. Bowen, Big Hink, 1985, Trevor Garner, Carter Hutchison, Mark Baker, Drew Stern, Jeffrey Sergeant, Connor Krupp, Chris Dennison, Carlo Cotignola, and Patrick Robinson, who I am not related to. But she would be fine to be related to. Sure. I mean, we're probably distantly related, but... Somewhere. Somewhere down the road. Yeah. Okay, so now hashtag stick around the part where we force you to stick around the plugs if you want more GHL. Ashley. Yeah. Uh, well, well hashtag stick around I got, a, I got a little TV Doom Patrol TV show question for you Jason okay uh, what is, what character would you most like to see show up on the DC Universe television show you mean specifically a Doom Patrol character it can be any character you want okay, I'll, tell, here you I'll go. tell you who's here you go okay because I, I have a pick I got it I got it I got it I got okay. it I got it I got it I got it I got it um, I think if the Doom Patrol TV show is going to fully embrace the weirdness of Grant Morrison, yeah. then I want to see Mr. Mala and the Brain. Ugh. Give me the giant monkey, steal the model from Flash, the I'm computer so model. I'm so sick of giant and, monkeys. And I am too. But <laughs> if any show is going to do it, I want Doom Patrol to do it and give me that weird rolling around skull machine with a brain on top. I if it, I want to see it in Doom Patrol. And you know what? Have them be created by Dr. Niles Calder. Oh, that'd be fun. I Actually, I, you know, it's funny as we were going through the lesson, I, I, it surely popped in my head. I was like, that's going to be the reveal of season one of Doom Patrol. I was like, that's the finale. You're going to find out that Timothy Dalton, Niles Calder caused all their accidents. I think so. Yep. I think so. I definitely think they're hitting again. I would really love to see um, Animal Man. Ooh, good pick. Your pick's much better. Because um, that'd be a great show to spin off. And also, uh, Grant Morrison wrote... I mean, arguably... He wrote Animal Man first. Uh, yes, and then but got he him, wrote yeah. arguably the definitive run on Animal Man, although I understand the New 52 series is quite Ooh, good as well. Oh, the Jeff Lemire run is really good. Um, it's I think it's a tie. That's fair. Um, but I think I think Animal Man would be good for the show, even though um, I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. Yeah. I think having a classic superhero to show up, to stand in obvious contrast to the rest of them would be really fun mm -hmm. and i think animal man would be a good character to do it he's still weird enough by the way and I, because mm -hmm. we obviously are not gonna have beast boy showing can up. can i give you a fun uh hashtag crisis club little tie-in yeah the grant morrison animal man series mm -hmm. is the series where they confirm that psycho pirate the character from christ land yes. remembers 
the past. Oh, well, there you go. There's this is a reason to read it's, it. It's Grant Morrison that introduced that. Yeah. And that happens in his Animal Man run. We will do an Animal Man lesson. Oh, I love someday. to teach that Animal Man. Jason will. Teach I love it. it, and that's great. Don't you love him in Fifty Two as well? I love Animal Man. I love. I love. He's. You know who? You know what else I love? Yeah, he's great in Fifty Two. He's amazing in Fifty Two. He's can, so good. Can I tell you something about Animal Man? Yeah. Terrible name. That's the point. Terrible name for a character. That's the point. Terrible. At least Beast Boy's alliterative. No, that's the point. That's the whole point. Uh, when I first heard about Animal Man, uh, I read it like in a some synopsis or something on the internet. Yeah. I thought that was Beast Boy's name when he grew up was Animal Man. You know, well, I didn't know that they were different. No, 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 no. I mean, it's kind of the point because Animal Man. I it, know that that's the point. Well, it's because he's a goofy dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he thinks the costume's cool. He thinks the name is cool, but it's because he's a goofy dad. Every time I see Animal Man drawn in the same panel as Booster Gold, he just looks like low rent Booster Gold cosplay. Yeah, they're separated at birth. Yeah, for sure. All right, that's it for Geek History <laughs> Lesson uh, and our love for Animal Man in this Doom Patrol episode. Uh, I am Jason Robot Man Inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. And close out the podcast. I was like, aren't you going to invite me? No, you're the Just like we do every Close episode. it out. Class, you close, close the podcast. Class is dismissed. Please don't do further research and learn that Jason caused all of your accidents. Ashley, can you close the podcast already? Class is dismissed. Close out the podcast. It's dismissed. Close it out. Uh, maybe not. God! That lev- this episode will never end. No, never.